In this session, we're going to do some more work with the Smear, Repel, and Attract tools in CorelDRAW X6. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a cool thorn brush we can use as artistic media or a brush stroke to add some cool effects to our designs. And we're going to see how working with these new tools can really expedite both the workflow process and the creative process when working on projects like this. Go ahead and zoom out here. And I've got a design set up here, and we'll apply some thorn effects to this design after we finish our brush. But go over here to the right, and we'll just start working over here. To get started, I'm just going to start with a simple rectangle shape. So come over here to, this, to the toolbar, click on my rectangle tool, left click, hold down, drag that out, and just create a simple rectangle, as you see there. And I'll come up here and click and convert that to curves. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my shape tool here, hold down, and I'll come down to the smear tool. Got our pressure set at 100. We're set up at a smooth smear, and our brush is set up here just about this size, which should be fine. Actually, I'll go ahead and hold down shift and make that just a little bit smaller. Start inside in the center of the rectangle and left click, hold down, pull out, and see that get smoothed out. Then I'll go ahead and switch to the pointy smear and then bring that out to a point just like that so it looks like my thorn is cut or comes to a sharp end. I'll do the same thing over here on the right. Start right in the center, left click, pull that out and you'll see that smooth out and then I'll change to the pointy smear until that comes to a point just like that. I go back to my smooth smear here and just kind of touch this here a little bit and the same here working off the outside of the brush. Now that I've got that set up, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and resize. I've got smooth smear set up here and just come through and touch some areas of the actual branch, which will be the thorns. But I think before I do that, I'll go ahead and just make some roughness in the actual branch itself. Nothing extreme, just a little retouching here, just to kind of break up the hard edge vector look that's on this branch currently. Okay, now that's done. Go ahead and reshape my nib. I'm going to hold down shift to right about there, and then I'm just going to come here and just pull out little notches in the branch where the thorns would come out of the notches in the branch, kind of like branches, but in this case we'll have thorns coming out. Now you could do this as a tree also. You could pull out this notch like this, and then you could hold down shift get a smaller nib and start to pull out actual branches from the notches as you can see there and just create a whole tree with this but I'll hit control Z and I'll go back to the brush size that I had before or close to it and just keep bringing these notches out and we'll bring one here and we'll put two of them side by side here you want this to look natural and organic not like hard edge vector and one there and I think we probably use another one right here also. Next step is going to be is I'm going to go ahead and change my nib size, hold down shift and we'll come in here and we'll just start pulling out our thorns but we want to go to our pointy smear first and that's too small. I want a bigger nib like right about here maybe. Maybe even a little bit bigger than that. Not too much but just a little. Start right on the side here and just pull out and shape and you'll get your thorns. A little bit bigger than that also. something like that and like that and you can see we're getting a nice natural look for these thorns which would be kind of difficult if we had to try and do all the shaping with the bezier tool and there's different ways to do these things but we want to take a look at where and when we can work with these tools and the type of dynamic design media that we can create inside of X6 to work with our designs and all, very often with design process it's really the little things such as brush strokes and distress effects and textures that really take our designs to the next level. And there we go. We've got some thorns there. Now the next thing I want to do is create some other thorns that aren't attached to any of the nibs or anything like that. So I'll hold down shift and bring this down quite a bit because you'd have some other thorns that would be coming out basically from the front and the back of the design. Something like this.
and we went in instead of out there but I'll go ahead and just quickly touch these up a little bit here just add a few more little spikes and thorns coming out in different places now if I wanted to I could spend some more time pulling some of these out further like this thorn here if I thought this was not too small I could just left click pull out some more here as you can see there and really tweak these out but for the sake of the tutorial I'll go ahead and wrap here with this part of setting up the actual thorn brush itself now this is set up what I want to do is bring a line a kind of natural line for some highlighting in here just to give some depth to this thorn stroke so I'll do that by coming in here with my ellipse tool I'll grab that left click here create a perfect ellipse hold that down I'll fill that with a black I'll take the outline off of that I'll go back to my smear tool this time I want to be smooth I'm going to be quite a bit bigger and I just want to come through here and start flowing now you see because I've got a bigger brush a bigger nib I'm going to start flowing a little bit differently but I want to just kind of flow along here as kind of like a highlight that you would see on the branch but yet keep it rather organic so that it's not looking like hard edge vector and we'll just keep bringing this right down through here now if I was going with a smaller brush or a smaller nib and I'll bring it down and show you I'd be getting a much smaller pull on my object as you can see there so I really want to be with the bigger nib so that I continue to get a consistent pull while I smear and stretch this vector out almost like I'm illustrating with it in X6 and you can work with a pen tablet to do this also and we'll bring this right over here and that'll be all set next thing I want to do is go and get a bigger nib hold down shift and enlarge again and then just kind of bring this line up into every place where I had a thorn and move that and tweak that a little bit kind of shape it to the actual brush and make sure the shape is staying consistent there now that I've done that I'm gonna go ahead and make an even smaller nib again and I'll bring some of these up just like this just so they look like they're flowing with the way that thorns come out of the branch almost like this highlight is flowing with the with the thorns and some more of the same there now here on the ends if I want to bring these to a point I can go to my pointy smear we'll bring that down in size and I can come over here and click this and just bring this right down to a point here go a little bit bigger and click and just come and drag that right into there and that comes right to a point and we can do the same over here just click and drag and that'll come right into a point now you can create some more branches in here if you wanted not branches but some more high shading and highlighting kind of like the bark the look of the bark on the thorn next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I missed one spot here that I definitely want to get which is right here I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit right there I'm gonna go back to and that was with my pointy smear and that's what I want I want the smooth smear for right here to bring that up Then I'm going to go to my pointy smear and I'm just going to kind of bring in some effects here so we'll go ahead and bring this down quite a bit smaller and then we can take right out of the middle here and just pull that up so it almost seems to flow with the thorn so that there's some shading that takes into account what's going on with the thorns as you can see there or highlighting like that and we'll do the same over here and the same thing here and we'll pull up some here and we'll do the same thing over here to this side now once all of that's done all I need to do is go ahead and I can fill this with a black I'll take the outline off I know that that other object is here but I can just lasso that and fill that with a white kind of like that there so there's my thorn now I could go and do some more shading and highlighting things in here but for the sake of the tutorial go ahead and wrap here I'm gonna go ahead and select this we'll group this and then we'll go back to our smear tool right here and I want to make this quite a bit bigger and I'm gonna duplicate this first so I'll left click start moving right click one time just to duplicate that grab this go back to my smear tool with my larger nib and then just kind of shape this thorn branch 
around because I'm going to use two branches and that's why I wanted to highlight so that I could put these two on top of each other and then shape them out. I'll bring this branch here over on top like this and I'll put this right behind the other one. Right click, order to back of page. I'm going to go back to my smear tool and I'm going to pull this one down here, pull this up here. You can see what I'm getting is a really mingled looking thorn brush that I can work with directly here in X6. I'm going to bring this up to a point right there like that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this here and bring that point right up in this way here. I'm going to pull this down here just a bit. So there you can see here just in a matter of a few minutes I've created a really nice thorn brush design effect. And I can create a couple of different brushes with this once I've done that. I can take this brush here, duplicate this here, and then I could come in over here, say bring this right into there, and marry those two together, and I'll have a longer stroke there, as you can see right there. Now, looking at this, the next step for me quite easily is just to open up my artistic media docker. Go ahead and group these, and I'll just left click and drag this one right into here, and release that. I'll select brush and I'll name this thorn one and select save and I'll do the same thing with the shorter one so I'll have two thorns a longer one and a shorter one just drag this in left click release brushes okay and thorn two select save so now what I have is I have an artistic media brush that I've created with the smear tools and the repel and attract tools in X6 that I can come down here to my artistic media, click off, make sure I don't have anything selected, click on one of these brushes, and we'll see what we can do with this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, and we'll bring this up, and we'll just make a stroke here. And you can see instantaneously I've got these thorn strokes that I can add to designs, and they look very cool. Very nice touch on some of your MMA looks or your sports looks or things like that. And we've got a whole series on the site of relating to brushes, but you can see I can change the size of this. And really, with brushes, you can manipulate your art in ways you really can't do with clip art very well. And we've got, actually, at this time, we've got about 1,200 brushes on the site, and then we've got new brushes in the X6 content pack, and brush pack five, 4 is coming out, etc. But So now, but if I wanted to add some brushes to my design here, all I would have to do then is, let's say you want to bring some, not brushes, but actually thorn brushes here. All you do is just left click, hold down, and we'll just come down here like this. You can see the effect I'm getting, but I need that much thinner in this design. I have to bring that down to about, we'll say, 0.7 right there. And I can just I'm gonna hold it, go ahead and delete that one. But I can come in and just kind of create some flows of thorns going down here with this half tone. And I could go to my longer one if I wanted right there, depending on what look I want. You can see that's the longer brush right there and here's the shorter brush and I kinda like what's going on with the longer thorns on this design even looking at it the way it is right here or the shorter now we come down here and we say okay well we've got this set up let's bring another stroke in down this way and we'll just tail this off at the bottom of the design something like that right there and then we can bring in yet another one here on top and have that one go like this and yet another one come in this way and flare out that way so now we've got this whole brush effect going on here with our thorns. I'll just go ahead and select these and right click order to back of page and when you're selecting these brushes you have to be sure you click on the graphic object and not the actual vector curve that they're attached to and I'll select these right click order to back of page and then we got all of them now I've got all these selected, I can go ahead and resize these, bring these up a little bit in size, something like that there, and change their position, as you can see there, and move them and kind of dial it in, bring this into a flow of thorns coming out of the bottom of the design. Go ahead and left click and come up here and lasso. Now I've got this all ungrouped here, let's see if we've got objects from the actual designer, if we just got our thorns, all we got was the thorns, okay good. I'm going to hit control Z, I'll hit group here. Just going to go ahead and left click, bring this over here to this side, duplicate that, mirror that, and then I can take that and right click and select order and go to back 
of page. So we can see that working with, and you can see the nice effect that adds to the design. Imagine that on the back of a shirt. It's just got a really nice modern look to it. That we could very easily use our smear tools, create some really dynamic vector objects, convert those to brushes, and then bring those in and use those to tweak and dress up our designs. And then we've got assets that we've created that are our own personal brush assets or media assets that we can work with in Corel Draw. So we'll go ahead and wrap here, and we'll continue in our next session.